Hello everyone, this is Stan. In this video, I want to discuss better methods of cooling for the laser chiller. Uh, as I mentioned in a video previous, uh, the chillers that are provided with these lasers aren't really chillers. There's no refrigerated circuit inside to, to really effectively cool the water. You just basically have a radiator that pulls the heat off. Not very effective if you're working in a warm environment. So I thought I would give a couple of different methods a go. First of which are the Peltier coolers. Now my first attempt, I had this very large heat sink here and then I mounted uh, two 12706s to that uh, using this uh, 12 volt power supply. And right off the bat, I realized that even though this is a large heat sink, it wasn't pulling the heat off of it very well at all. There's too much mass here. And I mounted this in front of the existing chiller fan. And I tried it in two different directions. Uh, as it comes from the factory, it's exhausting. Left to right here, as you see it. Turned it around to blow air across this heat sink as well and it, it didn't make any improvement at all there was too much heat here and and it wasn't cooling at all i was getting nothing so i ab abandoned that method and decided to go to this method uh, now these are some heat sink coolers that i purchased from amazon so i said spend a little bit of money for the sake of science here but i wanted to give it a go I 3D printed uh, these two mounting brackets for these fans that would basically sit down in the bottom of the chiller. And I used this very long heat sink block to mount them to. And I insulated it with cork because I wanted to make sure I didn't really have any losses here or a minimal amount of losses from the cooling side of it. And uh, this, of course, would, this whole assembly would set right in front of the existing chiller fan just like that very close and i'll have to say these heat sinks these fans and these heat sinks work very well they did a great job of getting the heat off of the peltier on this side uh, i could touch this and it was barely even warm so th these th this is the way to go if you're going to use heat sinks uh, you definitely need something better uh, if you're trying to do that now that being said the first peltiers that i tried in this i upgraded from the 12706s and went to the 12709 so i tried two of these uh basically got nothing i uh hooked it hooked everything up uh, these were drawing about six amps of power at 12 volts DC. Now the manufacturers will tell you they'll give you they'll tell you they'll in this case pull nine amps, but that's at a higher voltage. Uh, I believe it's around 15 volts DC. Well, most folks when they use power supplies, they're going to use ones like this. So I ran it at the 12 volts and uh, to get what I could get out of them. And basically, once again, even with this setup, and this was working very well. Uh, as a matter of flat fact, uh, this block would, of course, freeze up. I mean, it would get, you know, quite low in temperature. So I tried those. That did not work either. Uh, I let it run for approximately 10 minutes and virtually nothing, no cooling at all. And I double checked the wiring and, and the... Uh, uh, the electrical part of it to make sure that they were functioning and they were functioning they were pulling these were pearl pulling about six amps as i mentioned and um, but again to no avail so i decided to step up from these to the 12 7 15s which are the uh, 15 amp peltiers which are presently mounted on these now and those were pulling around uh, between 11 and 12 amps a piece. Now, now you're getting up in current on these power supplies. So as you can see with this setup, I have one power supply, these two heat sinks, and then the Peltiers, of course, that's adding up to quite a bit of money. And, 
And believe it or not, even these Peltiers didn't work either. Uh, it, they were pretty useless. I ran the uh, water circuit again with no heat load. Uh, just turned the chiller on and let the water circulate and for 10 minutes and virtually no change, minimal amount. So I abandoned this and decided to give the refrigerated uh, uh, ice maker uh, a go to see how well that did. Okay, so here is the ice maker that I purchased from Walmart. Um, this is a Frigidaire brand. Uh, the Walmart near me only had this. They didn't have any other uh, brands available. Now what I've done to this, it's a little different. I know some folks uh, talk about running their lines through the lids. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I drilled through the casing on the side just below uh, the lid. This is, uh, I believe, an 8 millimeter ID by 12 millimeter OD tubing. I used a half inch diameter drill bit, or you could use a 12 millimeter drill bit. I went right through this casing. There's no electrical parts inside of this, it's just the stainless or the sheet metal on the outside, insulation, and of course the tank itself, the liner on the inside. One of the things I want to uh, mention. I know a lot of folks will run this water tube and they'll run it over and let it pour inside of the reservoir. When this thing is running, uh, this water continually runs into the reservoir and it just basically overflows and uh, comes back into the tank here. Um, the, the problem I had with that, I didn't like the fact that the whole top part of this coil will ice up. Uh, basically, it's not being utilized. So only the part that's in the water uh, where it's making the ice cubes is really being utilized to cool the water. Um, so I didn't like that. I wanted to utilize this whole coil. So what I did was 3D print this manifold. It has a series of holes if you can see it or not get it in the light um, so I have two rows of, of holes in it underneath there so that I can push this in over top and it's very thin so it doesn't interfere with the ice making cycle so this can uh, move inside and not cause any problems because this is very thin as a matter of fact, let me turn the pump on and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so there you go. So I have water coming in and cascading down over top of this entire coil. Now what this is going to do, it's not going to make ice, but it's still going to go through its ice cycle. One of the things that I noticed when I just emptied this water return back into the reservoir where it made the ice was I would get slugs of cold water whenever the ice cycle would complete and it would dump the water in the circuit would cool down uh, a degree or two Celsius but it would stop wouldn't go any further uh, I wanted continuous cooling so what I did was, you know, of course, make this manifold uh, to allow it to uh, pour over this whole coil the whole time, constantly. And what that does is the water temperature continues to decrease. I'm using this Inkbird temperature sensor. It actually has, a, it's actually a temperature controller. So you can use it to actually turn something on or off, whether it be cooling or heating based on your temperature set point. So uh, I'm going to use that to monitor the temperature of this when I test it. There is the hole that I've got in the side of it for the temperature probe and I've, I've, I've got it setting in the water down here in front of the return to the pump. Uh, something else I'd like to mention in my previous video where I had this 3D printed flow gauge 
I had this mounted the other way. It was actually opposite, upside down from where you see it now. One of the things that I noticed was air bubbles would get trapped in the top of this and they couldn't get out on occasion. So I mounted this thing upside down. It's just a couple of magnets. Uh, there's a link in my uh, other video for anyone that wants to make this. This is all 3D printed and of course the acrylic is laser cut. Um, but I'll, I'll put a link to that uh, to the downloads for that in the other video below. Now what I'm going to do is to turn this ice maker on and I'm going to time time it and see how long it takes to cool the water down to I don't know say 17 degrees Celsius or so uh, and see how long it takes to do that I'll time it now this is not going to be under any heat load um, I just want to see how long it takes to cool this water loop down to a temperature that I want to start with when I when I engrave. Now you have to be careful. You don't want the water to be too cold. Uh, you don't want to get below the dew point in your area based on your humidity and your temperature because you do not want any sweating to happen inside of your laser tube. So be mindful of that and be careful about running your water too cold um, because you do not want that to happen. So let's give it a go and see how long it takes to get it down to about 17 degrees Celsius. Celsius now. I'm going to go ahead and start this. OM Tech recommends that you keep the water temperature between 16 and 21 degrees Celsius or 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and start the laser engraving now. Uh, I'm going to leave this lid up so that uh, everyone can see this. But I do have my safety glasses. So here goes. After running that small file for testing the uh, ice maker, I decided to run something bigger. That was really uh, too quick. Uh, that test wasn't long enough. So I'm going to run this instead. This is a cabinet mounted wine bottle holder that I'm making for my wife. Uh, this is actually just the top half of it, uh, each side. So I'm going to run that at 75% power on cutting the line cutting and then it's 25% power on these rectangular lines those are locating the spacer blocks so let's run this and see how well the ice maker does in handling uh, this load okay so I've allowed the laser water temperature to get down to 15.2 degrees Celsius so I'm going to go ahead and start this laser cutting project now and uh, like before, I have the lid up, but I am wearing my uh, glasses.
Okay, so this project took a little over 17 minutes and about 90, almost 99% of this project was at 75% power with the exception of these little rectangles here which was 25% power, one pass and the temperature climbed up to 26.7 degrees and it continued to climb while it was doing this. So even though the ice maker is still a lot better than the original so-called chiller, which really isn't a chiller, um, it still couldn't keep up with this machine. Now this is a 60 watt laser and again running at 75% power for the bulk of this project here. Now something that you can do if you run into issues like this and you want to maintain a, uh, a lower water temperature is you could just simply hit the pause button on your controller and just pause it allow your water temperature to come back down and then resume your your laser cut and grade anyway so there you have it uh, it's still a much better option than the so-called chillers that are being sold out there. Um, now to buy a real chiller, I mean, you're looking at several hundred dollars. Uh, again, this was purchased at Walmart. It was $108. Now, uh, very well could buy a, a better ice maker that has a little bit higher capacity uh, to make ice quicker. That should actually do better than, you know, than this unit. Uh, but again, it's all in how much you want to spend and what you're willing to do to make it work. Um, I hope this video was helpful for everyone. Uh, if you like this video, found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. Take care.